All right. So I'm going to talk about exporting data from Adaptive. Um, so I think the most commonly used one, what we used to do is we, we are in the spreadsheet and we use the download button. And I think the drawback of using this is we've got the row up, we've got the space and we have to follow the format that might be uh, empty rows and columns that we don't want. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, two options in particular. Um, one is the export function in the integration. So we get to there is the integrations menu export, export data. And that will take us to the export data page. Now on this page, what it's doing is that it will try to export data according to the current version we are on. Um, for example, if here is where we choose that the version of data we, we were doing. In the filter, what we do is we go and edit and select the account, the level, and then we can restrict to a time range. And that's how we actually set the data we want. So if I haven't got anything here, what you notice here is that you need to expand your accounts. And you have to manually tick them one by one. And most of the time in the other area of adaptive, you notice sometimes we can just click the parent account and include all the children account. But in this window, unfortunately, you can't really just tick any parent account. You notice that the parent account I'm ticking, it doesn't really bring in any children account. So this is one of the complaints we often have. It's yes, we have to manually tick the account we don't, uh, we want. And most often we would just want the children account, which take us to the, where the data is stored. Um, so same logic is that when we choose and select our levels, we need to expand. And um, I've got some settings in there before, and that's why it's there. But yeah, so again, you have to tick the levels that you want one by one manually. You can't just take the parent account and bring in the children one. Um, once we set up the accounts and the levels, and then we can just choose from the drop down the data we want to see by restricting to a time period. For example, then you can just choose from January to December 2019. And then here we go, we've got the um, other options that if you want to bring in dimensions, you can actually set and include your dimension data. So it's interesting, you notice here when I was refreshing and bringing the dimensions, the annoying thing is it's the data we've just chosen is disappeared. Oh, no, actually, we're still there. My level's still there, yeah, okay. It's <laughs> not too bad. Um, so, yeah, if you need to any um, dimension you need to bring in, you can then insert. I don't think I've got any data um, breakdown further on this account I selected. So, yeah, the next thing is you just press the export button. And here it generates a CSV file for you, and then you can take it and upload to another applications or you can actually use for calculation or reconciliation, etc. And you notice here when you're exporting the data, unfortunately, the layout of the columns has to be in this order. You can't actually swap the account with your level, etc. Um, this is one of the disadvantage of using the exporting button. So um, the other options we can export data is why creating a web report. So we go to report. And here we go and it's, we can create a new metrics report.
Um, while the um, metrics report take you a, mi a few minutes to create this um, export, but if once you've created, you can save it and you can also use in the future by change um, your, um, your um, parameter easily and you can then define again how you want it to export the data. So let me just quickly do one and do a similar selection of what we were doing before. So I've selected the revenue account and I expanded to allow all of my children account to show. And um, next thing is I bring in the levels. And again, expand to bring in all the children levels. And then the next thing we can do is to bring in the time. Here I'm going to select the time span because that allows you to modify the time easily and also it will display according to the version I selected. And um, as before, you can just use all the time available on that period or you can just bring that uh, specific selections in. So for example, in that period, And then any of the data I've bring in so far, for example, the time, if I wanted to have it in the parameter for me to do it next time, I can easily bring it in. And we can also enable this prompt before viewing functions. And so it, when, before you actually export the data, the system will prompt for you to select the period and make sure that's the period you would like. And the next thing is that I then can filter it further by bringing the version I would like. For example, if I bring in actuals, then I can put that into the parameter and that also will allow me to choose it next time when I export the data. So we've got all this data there available and then the most important thing is that we need to make sure our report para, um, property actually set to um, the settings that allow us to export data um, what we usually do is that we would like to repeat the role labels in Excel when you export to Excel and we would like to um, suppress the row up and we probably wanted to suppress the columns or rows that we have no data with. Um, it depends on how your instance is set up. Sometimes we may or may not need to include the account codes, but with the instance we have, um, we've got this uh, demo here. We've got the account code already embedded in the account names, so we don't need to include the code twice. And so then um, it's optional note that you can set the Excel output as default or not, but I personally like to usually view my data before I export it, and that's why in here, uh, this example, I don't set it as default as Excel. I would like to view my data and make sure that's what I want before I export it. So once I've got the, all these settings um, set and I applied it, and then I can have a try run on my report. And here, because we set the, the prompt and asked me to, to set the time, it actually did prompt me to set the time. And um, I'm actually exporting from January 2019 to 2020. Then when I run the report, actually bring up all the data on a web report form, then I can view the data. As you notice here on my account, actually only showing in one column, but when it export to Excel, because we got the setting as repeat the road headers. And now um, if I then export it to Excel, you will notice all the row header, it's report repeated. There you go. Um, and that's roughly how you would set your report to facilitate exporting. If we go back to our report and then what we need to do is to save a, a report. Data. 
And that's something you can use for next time. And because we in the web reporters, you notice if you would like to swap some elements in between, like if I prefer to have my accounts um, as the second columns and we can easily change the order of this and then that will change the layout. Um, as far as we can see here, it's more flexible to use the web report to export data and comparing to the export um, data page. And um, alternatively, uh, some people were saying, yeah, when I choose my levels, and sometimes it's difficult for me to particularly select some levels. And as we know here, it depends on how your instance is set up. Some of our instance would have got um, level attributes, which is a filter of the level. So if I bring that in as a filter, for example, and that can further help in selecting particular um, levels. So for example, if I have in here, when I run my report, I can actually pick a selection of levels. Say if I just want to include operat operational levels and I can actually filter the data easily. Alternatively, they could bring it into the rows themselves, Brenda, and then do the filtering themselves in Excel if they wanted to. Yeah, that's right. So um, yeah, obviously you can modify whatever you exported. <laughs> but I think it's easier if you've got a massive amount of levels and to select particular levels sometimes can be harder. And my, uh, what I was trying to say is the idea is that if you would like to pick selections of levels, you can use the grouping by adding a level attributes on that. Yep. Um, similar idea is that you, if you would like to select particular set of accounts, you can bring in account attribute to group the accounts in yep. a special way.